Most of us are so arrogant. Because we rely so much on our knowledge. We are certain. Our beliefs, our conclusions, our desires are so strong that we have lost all sense of deep, natural humility. Which again is a fact. How strong when a Frenchman says, I'm a Frenchman, or when you say, I'm British. I don't know if you have noticed. God given race. And everyone feels this in every country. The other day, an Indian was talking to us. He said, We have the greatest culture in the world. We are the most highly civilized people. I said, Yes. You are corrupt. You are superstitious. Your beliefs have no value at all. Your ideals, your religion, just a scrap of words. He said, No. But we are still the highest culture. I said, all right. (laughs) No, no, please don't laugh. This applies to you too. So, when we identify ourselves with a country, with certain ideologies, with conclusions, concepts, then we are incapable of being humble. Because then only when you are inquiring in humility you learn, you find out And humility is necessary. Then you then you see things as they are around you and in yourself. And discipline is constant watching. Watching your own reaction. continual observation, seeing what the source of your thought is, why you react certain ways, what your biases are, your prejudices, your hurts and so on. Constant watching brings its own natural discipline, order, That's what we mean by discipline. Not conformity, not following a certain pattern, either established by society or by yourself. But the eternal watching of the world and of yourself. Then you see there is no difference between the world and yourself. That brings about naturally a sense of order. Therefore, uh, order is discipline, not the other way around. And work, not only physical work, which unfortunately most of us have to do. Not if you are unemployed in this country. But also work in the sense, apply, apply 
what you see to be true and applied. Not give an interval of time between perception and action. If one sees, as the speaker has seen many, many years ago, as a boy, that nationalism was poison. I hope you don't mind my saying all this. that he was no longer a Hindu. He just walked. He was no longer a Hindu. Finished. With all their superstitions and, you know, all that rubbish that goes on with every nationality. So to live on this earth peacefully, in spite of the governments, requires a great deal of inquiry. To live peacefully demands great intelligence. I said, can we go on like this? It's easy for the speaker to talk about all these things. Well, that's his life. But merely listening to what is being said seems so futile. But the moment you apply if you see something to be true, instant application, then that removes altogether conflict. Conflict exists only when there is a gap, a division between what you see to be actual, to be true, and all the implications of fear of your action. So there is an interval, a gap, a hiatus, which brings about conflict. I hope you are understanding all this. May I go on? Or am I going on for, to, for myself? Are we following each other a little bit? I am not... We are not doing any kind of propaganda. We are trying to convince you of anything. On the contrary, one must have doubt, scepticism, question, not only what the speaker is saying, but question your own life, question, doubt your own beliefs. If you begin to doubt, it gives certain clarity. doesn't give you such feeling of great importance to yourself. So, doubt is necessary in our exploration, in our inquiry into this whole problem of existence. And the question whether it is possible for human beings who are perhaps somewhat neurotic, whether that neuroticism can be wiped away, become sane, rational, with such a brain, inquire. 